All right, Jim Al Khalili, welcome to Jet. It's wonderful to have you here. Uh, what brings you to Jet? Well, we are filming a two-part series for BBC Four. Uh, which will go out later this year in the autumn, uh, called Order and Disorder. So it's, it's another one of those BBC Four, you know, mm -hmm. get, get to the nitty gritty science, and, uh -huh. we're, and we're talking about the second law of thermodynamics. Right. So coming to, to Cullum and Jet is because we want to talk about unlocking energy stored up in the early universe oh, and right. then and through fusion reactions you know uh -huh. uh, uh, okay. getting access to that energy so it's, it's part of our story of energy and entropy and all that yeah. all that stuff yeah i mean entropy is a word you hear a lot uh, how are you finding explaining that for a for a non-physics audience well, so it, entropy is a concept that even physicists very often find quite confusing. I mean we can write down the equations and, 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 and we sort of know how to define it but, uh, but really talking about entropy, we know the second law of thermodynamics is one of the most important, if not the most important law in, in physics. I always think it's amusing that the most important law in physics only makes it to second place in laws of <laughs> thermodynamics. Right? But, but, but it's, it's almost entering popular culture now mm. that non-scientists, you know, people who have an interest in science, will have heard of the second law of thermodynamics. They will have heard of entropy and they say, oh well that's to do with how untidy a system is or how run down something is. So it's actually getting into those ideas. Mm and trying to find nice analogies mm -hmm. but not shy away from explaining it properly that's that's mm -hmm. what we can do on mm -hmm. BBC 4 mm -hmm. excellent so you, how many equations oh quite a few I oh, we, uh, we, um, well um, last week we were filming in some derelict warehouse in, in, in South London and I got to write down an equation involving a logarithm on, on, a, on a window screen. Oh, oh. So, I mean, there you go. okay, it's, it's to look impressive yeah. rather than explain yeah. what logs are, uh -huh. but nevertheless, you know, yeah. the idea that you can yeah. write down equations is something yeah. that's become yeah. almost fashionable now. And uh, coming back to your visit of JET, what, have you, what, what are your impressions of the the facility and the science here? Well, uh, I think I've been here once before and that was over 20 years ago uh, for a nuclear physics conference and, and, and I, it was a three-day conference. I remember coming here and we was sat in talks all day in seminars and then went for, for lunch in the canteen and more in the afternoon and off-site for dinner. I never got to see the site itself mm. and so this is well it, this is my first visit essentially yeah. so very excited to, to, you know, to have a look around. I hadn't realized how big the site was <laughs> <laughs> especially when you're here with the film crew and you're lugging you know heavy bags <laughs> full of batteries and camera lenses yeah. and so on it's yeah. just you know there are some distances to cover <laughs> but uh, no enjoyed going inside the test mm -hmm. facility Taurus and, and, and okay it's not the real jet Taurus but it, <laughs> for all intents and purposes yeah it's the same thing and that's mm -hmm. you know one of those iconic mm. places in yeah. science that's it's quite quite yeah. quite nice to see firsthand mm. and impressions of the the science and the progress of fusion uh, you've obviously as a nuclear scientist been aware of what's been going on uh, yes I I, um, I find it fascinating that we now very much have not a race but healthy competition between the the, the magnetic confinement plasma fusion that's the research carried out here at Cullum and then the inertial confinement laser driven fusion uh, at places like NIF in, in California. Um, I guess like most people here, you know, we're, the question everyone has always asked is, so you always say it's 25, 30 <laughs> years in the future, is that number coming down? I tend to be optimistic. I tend to think that at last we are seeing, rather than it always being 25, mm. 30 years away, we're now eating into those years. So it's still some while away, but I think it's mm -hmm. exciting that fusion is making process of, of progress and of course with, with the, the new ITER project in France, the next generation after JET, I think it, it, things are starting to build up a certain mm. head of steam. We've been chatting with Jim Al-Khalili, the Professor of Nuclear Physics from Surrey University and BBC broadcaster. Thank you very much Jim. Pleasure.